In this first of two videos on the game industry, we're going to very briefly look at a history of games. We will touch on how it started and how it has grown to become a global gaming market. We don't need to go into a detailed account of the history of video games, but it will be useful to get an overview of the industry and some of the key milestones to get a feeling for how quickly the sector has grown to become a dominant cultural pastime and how much the technological and creative landscape of creating games has changed within such a short period of time. Some underlying things to keep in mind are how technological advances have fostered a culture of innovation. This will be helpful when we look at how gaming has created a culture of innovation and driven changing consumer patterns and expectations and how technological changes have driven the growth of the sector. And this will be useful when we look at the economic changes that are currently happening in the sector. After the Second World War, we see the development of massive mainframe computers through the 1940s and into the 1950s. Often these were constructed at universities for both military and scientific applications. The very earliest experiments in creating computer games were developed on these very large monolithic machines. The top image here gives you some idea of the size of these early computers. Here we have one of the early pioneers of electronic gaming, A.S. Douglas, who created an electronic version of X's and O's on a mainframe at Cambridge University in 1952. It is worth noting that due to the expense and size of these machines, these early innovators such as Douglas had no real commercial incentive to create games at this point. There really was no concept of a commercial games industry. Some early indication that there would be demand for these new electronic games can be seen in 1958, where an electronic version of a tennis game was exhibited as part of a science fair. Visitors waited in line at Brookhaven National Science Laboratory to play Tennis for Two. This was created by a scientist by the name of William, William Higginbotham. Two people played the electronic tennis game with separate controllers that connected to an analog computer and used an electronic oscilloscope for a screen. Higginbotham created it as he felt it might liven up the place to have a game that people could play and which would convey the message that our scientific endeavours have relevance for society. Jumping forward from these early electronic experiments, we find the first commercial products in the early 1970s. This is the start of the modern gaming industry. We're going to jump to 1972, where a company called Atari began to sell a video game called Pong, which was really a refined version of Higginbotham's Tennis for Two. Retailing at approximately $1,000, it was a commercial success, and arcade machines began emerging in bars, bowling alleys, and shopping centres around the world. In 1977, Atari go on to release the Atari 2600, a home console that featured joysticks, and interchangeable game cartridges that played multicolored games, starting the home video game console market. Up to this point, the hardware manufacturers, such as Atari, had been developing their own games in house, such as 1978's Space Invaders, which is a huge success. But then in 1979, Activision became the first third party game developer, and this is the start of the game development studios, which will supply the creative content for this rapidly expanding market. Moving into the 1980s, we see new emerging markets and very competitive growth and competition as new companies enter the sector. In 1980, a Japanese game called Pac-Man becomes a massive hit in America, becoming one of gaming's early global success stories. Across the early 1980s, companies such as Apple, IBM and others have helped to establish the personal computer or PC market, and this has introduced computers into people's homes. In 1982, Microsoft releases its first version of the Flight Simulator game, one of the earliest PC games. In 1983, there is an oversaturation in the console market, and competition from the PC market leads to a games market crash, causing many of the early gaming companies to exit. 1985, Super Mario Bros. is released and newer companies, such as Nintendo and Sega, become the dominant market leaders across the next decade. In 1989, Nintendo go on to release the Game Boy, which is really the start of handheld gaming. And in 1990, we see that 
Windows bundles Solitaire with Windows 3.0. And this is important because they have now introduced millions of new computer users to digital gaming. And that is the start of the casual gaming sector. In the early 1990s, Nintendo and Sega are still fighting to become the dominant gaming platform. In 1991, Sega released Sonic the Hedgehog and created an iconic hero to rival Nintendo's Mario. Advances in technology have created many different genres of games at this point, and advances in graphics uh, mean that the visuals of games have become much more realistic. In 1993, combat games like Mortal Kombat, a fighting game that depicted blood and violence, led to the creation of video game rating systems, a sign of the maturing of the games industry and also of its growing cultural importance. In 1994, Sega are struggling to cope with the rate of technological change and after a string of commercial flops released the Sega Saturn. It too was a commercial failure. In 1995 Sony entered the market and released the PlayStation. They replaced Sega as Nintendo's main competitor. Sega will eventually exit the home console business. In 1998 Snake becomes a preloaded game on Nokia phones paving the way for mobile gaming. In the early 2000s, Nintendo failed to deal with the rate of technological change and released a games console called the GameCube, which is a commercial failure. In 2001, Microsoft entered the market by releasing the Xbox and they will go on to be the main rival to Sony's PlayStation as a dominant player in the console market. In 2003, a gaming company called Valve released Steam this allows you to download games over the internet and establishes a new gaming digital distribution platform which encourages the growth of smaller or indie game developers. In 2006, Nintendo come back into the market by releasing the Wii with innovative motion control remotes trying to appeal to the whole family. In 2007, a game called World of Warcraft records 10 million online players. This marks a tipping point towards online gaming. We're going to leave our brief history of gaming here, and this will lead us nicely up to the current decade of gaming, which we will look at more closely in the next section. That was a very brief introduction to the history of games. Just to recap, hopefully you've been introduced to some new terms surrounding the games industry, and now have a better appreciation for how quickly games have developed to become a dominant cultural pastime. Over a period of approximately 50 years, we've moved from early experiments to gaming consoles, to games on computers, to games on phones. Technological advances have driven a culture of innovation, leading to new genres of games, new hardware platforms, even new ways to interact with games. Technological change has also driven the economic growth of this sector, from the arcade to the home console, games on the PC and towards online gaming. We've seen the rise and fall of many of the industry's dominant companies as they struggle with the furious rate of technological change. These technological advances have also led to very high expectations from end users who aren't afraid to move away from companies that fall behind the technological curve. This concludes our very brief introduction to the, to the history of games. In the next section, we will more closely examine the current economic state of the games industry.